Safely hiding from the storm, found no place at the keeper's door. It was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow. The sleeping town it did not know. The lying in a manger low, save your king who had no home, has come to heal our sorrows. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there that we might serve in ministry with you. There are blue cards in front of you if you need to lift someone in prayer. And if you'd like to support those in the recent path of the tornado, you can assist the United Methodist Committee on Relief. That information is in your bulletin today. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our Christmas Eve offering coming up later this week will be designated to the Good Samaritan Fund to support people in need in our community. Now we have a very important word from our sponsors about Christmas Eve services, Friday, four o'clock, seven o'clock. Take a look and listen. Welcome from your friends at Wesley United Methodist Church of Macomb. 
We want to invite you to our Christmas Eve candlelight communion services here at 1212 West Calhoun on Friday, December 24th at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. We will praise the newborn King that evening in music, scripture, word, and prayer. If you have not been back to church since the pandemic, this is an excellent opportunity to return to your spiritual home. We are still following the state of Illinois guidelines on public gatherings and ask for all attendees to please wear a mask while indoors. How we gather to honor Jesus has changed, but why we gather remains. We gather to celebrate the presence of the Lord in our lives and we sincerely hope that you will join us. We light these candles as symbols of hope, peace, joy, and love. We receive these gifts we find with the arriving Christ child, and we are called to pray. Gracious God, our time of waiting is almost over. We pray that we have prepared well that we will be witnesses, and that we open our hearts to his love. Amen. Good morning again, church. We welcome you to stand as you're able, and help us lift up our voices this morning as we sing the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Wait till the other two get up here. Good morning. Well, I was thinking what we were going to talk about today, and I knew that we were going to be talking about love at this service, and we just lit some of the Advent candles. So I drew something. I'm quite an artist. What did I draw? Can you see what that is? What is that? Do you know? What is it? A heart. A heart, isn't it? See how artistic I am? It's a big heart. I guess it could have been bigger. What do you think of when we see hearts? What do we talk about? Do we talk about love? We do. And sometimes when you see hearts, you're thinking about Valentine's. It's not Valentine's, is it? Is it Christmas? And you know, God gave us his only son, and that's why we're celebrating Christmas. He brought love into the world, and he wanted us to go out and share that love with everyone. Now, you've brought something special with you. Is that something you love? I be, yes, I bet you do. So we all have things we love. It's a time to give and to love. So as you come into Christmas this next week, and we think of the Christ child that was born, let's think of the love that was brought into the world so that we all may share. Let's say a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these children and for the love. May they grow in your love and your spirit. Amen. God is good all the time. This is the time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. I don't have a prayer request here with me, but I know we do have prayer requests. We do have prayer to ask. Uh, we, we do have words to talk to the Lord. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you have allowed us to come together to worship you. Lord, we give you praise for you are great. We give you praise for your faithfulness, for your love. We give you praise for who you are, almighty God. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come into your presence. Now, Lord, we ask that your spirit will move upon each one of us, gathered here and those worshiping with us from home or wherever they are, Lord, I ask that the same spirit that moving here will be with them as well, reuniting us with you, Lord. I give you praise for you are a wonderful God, so loving, so merciful. Now we ask that you accept our act of worship this morning and bless us. Bless us abundantly, Lord, with good life, long life, good health. So we ask that you be with those who are not feeling well right now, wherever they are. We ask for your spirit of healing that will touch them. And give them the healing that they need, no matter what it is, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise, for you are 
Jehovah Rapha, the healer by excellence. So I give you praise. Now, Lord, I also ask that you be with those who have lost loved ones. I ask that you be with them this time. This is not the right time we will say, but there is never a right time to lose a loved one. Lord, I ask that you comfort them, comfort them, be present in all the moves, Lord, we pray. We thank you for your word says you are always with us no matter what. That gives us comfort and encouragement to move on. So we lift our country in your hands and ask you for that grace to be with also our leaders, that you inspire them with your wisdom so that we, they will be able to lead this country according to, the, according to your will in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke all powers of darkness against us, Lord. I ask that you reign and rule in our families, in our workplace, yes. in our friends, reign and rule. Lord, we pray. Reign and rule in our churches, Lord, wherever they are lifting up your name. May you be magnified. Thank you, Lord, for your words that you have made available for us to help us in our walk. I thank you, for you are wonderful. Now, Lord, I pray also for those planning to travel this week. I pray for travel mercies. Be with them. Hear the voices of your children as we lift our voices together, praying to you, our Father, who art in heaven. Our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I'll ask for the ashes to please come forward as I pray. God of glory, we thank you for what you have blessed us with. Now we give you this little contribution to your work. May you bless it. May you bless it. And may you bless the source of providence in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you praise and glory. Amen.
Testament reading is coming to us from Micah, chapter 5, verse 2 to 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrata, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor is brought forth. Then the rest of his, of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth and he shall be the one of peace. Our New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning in verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. McKenna Churchill is going to open this sermon with something to touch your memories and your emotions. First performed by Judy Garland, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, 1944. Rarely has there been a song in this season to capture our emotions past and future. The music of our church reaches that range of emotions. There are the songs of lament, the songs of love to God, the sweet lullabies to the Christ child, the soul-filled spirituals and hymns of joy and carols of Christmas. Lynn Thompson has been kind. He's a kind man to allow his senior pastor to sing with that choir. <laughs> He's taking great risks. I've, I've never sung out of key yet, but with only one good vocal chord, the possibility exists. Actually, we have some outstanding musicians up here, up here, and out there, who some of whom ought to be up here. That's another story, if you thought. Mary, our mother's, our, the mother of our Lord, 
reaches deep to sing her song. This poor peasant, this expectant unwed girl was weighed down by the salvation of the world growing within her. So Mary sang in a minor key, a different key, a dissonant key, a dangerous key. Her song, her Magnificat, as it's called in Latin, begins with heartfelt praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, your lowly servant. All generations will call me blessed. Does it really surprise you that our Catholic brothers and sisters have revered Mary as someone more than mere human? She offers God an affectionate expression of gratitude, but then the mother of our Lord changes her tune from praise to holiness, from grace to criticism. She sees injustice and looks for God's saving judgment where arrogance, power, and wealth mean absolutely nothing. Listen to what Mary says, verse 50. God's mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts, put down the mighty, exalted the lowly, filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. We, the proud, the powerful, the prosperous, are left standing in Mary's judgment. Bishop Williman says, this is no Christmas carol. This is no lullaby that Mary sings. The words thunder forth like a battle chant. She's echoing the words her son will one day preach. Blessed are the poor. Those who mourn. Those who are meek, those hungry and thirsting for justice, they will be filled. And I have come to bring good news for those who are poor, release for the captives, sight for the blind, freedom for the oppressed. Matthew chapter 5 and Luke 4. The writer Reuben Job tells us that Mary's song of praise must have been a shock. It bordered on treason and blasphemy. It is a message of radical revolution. In Latin America, it is a fact that it was once forbidden to sing Mary's song as it gave too much voice to the oppressed. Our missionaries in India were warned that reading Mary's words in public might incite hostility and unrest. In our own country, Mary's Magnificat may not sound so magnificent to the wealthy of Wall Street and the powerful of the Pentagon. Mary had grown up witnessing the molestation of her people by Rome. She'd been nurtured among the impoverished and forgotten people. So the The child growing within her was the promise of justice. Her song was not intended to drive the powerful away. No, when when Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler and to Zacchaeus, he didn't drive them to despair, but he did encourage compassion with their wealth. Mary's song is full of praise and hope and revolution. Her message is bigger than the ancient empire of Rome, and it's bigger than the current economy of the United States. In her book, The Liberating, in his book, The Liberating Birth of Jesus, Lee Van Ham reminds us that Mary's song is, it views a world where we can live justly and abundantly and arrange our economy to care for all 
humanity. Van Ham warns that this, this market economy has expanded beyond the health and stability of this planet. Earth's livability is being massively eroded and we must take drastic measures to change our behavior. Mary's child will right the wrongs, strengthen the weary, heal the broken, comfort the forgotten, transform the way we treat each other, and perhaps even the way we treat our planet. Mary's song reminds me of some of our Christmas carols that begin with a sentimental touch, comforting us with hope and love and joy and peace before challenging us to personal transformation. Charles Wesley, one of the most prolific writers of the 19th century, wrote, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's one of his 6,000 hymns. Like most, the, ly the lyrics of our carols have changed over the centuries. 1734, this is what Charles Wesley wrote. Hark how all the welkin rings, glory to the king of kings, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. You can hear the gentle notes of the welkin, that's an old English word for angel, thus that change. But did you hear the message that all sinners need to be reconciled? That, that Christmas is a time for salvation, transformation, and forgiveness? Did you hear the revolutionary call for all nations to proclaim his birth? In 1863, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. War was raging between the states over slavery. Europe was in trouble. Austria was in conflict with Italy. And Longfellow wrote a message of peace. But deep in the tolling of his bell is another revolution. In his third stanza, he writes, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, and in despair I bowed my, my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth. Goodwill to man. But Longfellow knows justice is coming. His fourth stanza, he writes, then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth. Goodwill to men. It's a call for God's revolution, like the song of a young girl named Mary who had every reason to believe that the, that the child within her would be the Christ. The angel promised it. She had every reason to hope that he would right the wrongs in the world. The prophets predicted it. She had every reason to sing praise to a God of justice and love. Her experience confirmed it. For 2,000 years, Mary's song is remembered for its pleasant tones but in her lyrics is also the danger for the status quo. God's love will be born in Bethlehem. So will God's justice. And we should be praying that both love and justice will transform our minds, our hearts, and our actions. That's what I'm praying for this Christmas. Will you join me? Lord God, in Mary is a promise of putting down the powerful and lifting up those who are broken. 
Well, you know where each of us stand, Lord, where we need to be humbled or encouraged. Bring your justice to right our wrongs. Forgive our sins. Change our violent nature. For if we are transformed, the world will be transformed. And if we are sensitized, the earth itself may be saved. Bring your love and your justice to us. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can stand if you're able and join us as we sing a song called One Thing Remains.
for our last song. This is called King of Love. Before we share a benediction together, we have a very special moment for you at 9.30 in the atrium this morning. Wesley Daycare is going to do a little mini performance for you. And uh, so I know you want to be a part of that. That's 9.30 this morning in the atrium. Now I share this benediction before the praise band completes our time together. We go from this place, God, reminding us that at the center of the Christ child is love and justice, love for all humanity, love for us in spite of ourselves, and justice that one day the, the evil that exists will be overcome in this child born at Bethlehem. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated and enjoy this.